So you want to play online with your friends, but you never have before. Well, me either, until now. So here's a super quick and efficient crash course on what I learned is exactly what you need. Coming up. Welcome to The Dungeon Coach. I'm The Dungeon Coach. I'm gonna help you lower that DC in your game by giving you a quick and simple beginner's guide to playing Dungeons and Dragons online. There's been a ton of videos recently on this topic, but I wanted to make the most beginner-friendly, jam-packed, to-the-point guide on YouTube. And everything in this video can be done 100% free using Discord and Roll20. You could totally substitute out Discord for Zoom, Google Hangouts, or Skype, and you could substitute Roll20 for Fantasy Grounds or Tabletop Simulator, but this is just the system that I've found to be the most efficient. All you need for this is voice and video, the ability to roll some sort of dice online, maps and miniatures, and characters in combat. The most optimal setup here is gonna be a PC or a laptop that has a webcam attached or a built-in camera of some kind so that people can see you. This is not required, because at the end of the day, you just wanna play online with your friends in whatever way you can. All of this can also be done for free on an iPad, but if you wanna be able to play on your phone, you're gonna to have to have that paid subscription to Roll20. I'm gonna be going real fast, so buckle up. First thing we're gonna take care of here is voice, because you need to be able to hear each other. In my opinion, the best option here is Discord, and if you already have a server, invite your players to it, and you're good to go. And skip ahead to this part of the video, because right now I'm gonna go over a very quick way to set up your own server. And there'll also be timestamps in the top comment with quick and efficient links to everything in this video. Go to Google and search Download Discord. One of the very top options is gonna be Discord Downloads. Right here, you click Download Discord. You can download this app on any device. Then once you're done with that, you're gonna actually go to Discord. If you're brand new to this, you'll have nothing over here on the side. These are all the different channels that I have. All you're gonna start off with is one text channel and one voice channel. All this is is me streaming my screen right now. All you need to know from top to bottom is this invites people, but if that button goes away, you can just hover over any of these chats, click the Create Invite button, and this is the link right here. If you wanna add a text channel, click this plus button, you create a channel. Do you wanna create a text channel or a voice channel? I'm gonna create a text channel, create, and there it is, campaign chat room. If you wanna make a voice channel, you go to voice channel, you can add these different ones too. Voice channel, create channel. You can be in one voice channel and one text channel at the same time. Discord's also awesome for fixing technical difficulties. If anyone runs into a problem, you can stream your screen like I'm doing now and everybody else can help you troubleshoot. And the bottom left of the screen is where you have all your options. This is for any of your voice stuff, streaming your screen, hanging up your call, muting yourself, muting everyone else, and your settings. Click on user settings and go to voice and video. And this is probably what your screen looks like. You can change your input and output devices along with the volume of them. And down here is the most important part. Voice activity is when you speak, it just picks it up. Push to talk, you can change whatever button you want by clicking this and typing, I'm gonna press Q and then start recording. And now it'll only pick up my audio when I press the Q button. There's two different ways to do this, but for both ways, the DM should be on voice activity and I change the sensitivity here and bring it down really low so it picks up my voice very quickly. But your players don't really need this type of sensitivity. So for players, I change it all the way down to about 35 is what I would set for players. This just helps limit down the distracting clutter noise. And if you wanna take it one step farther, you can have your players set up push to talk to where they can only be heard when they press that button. But for my players, I have them use voice activity at negative 35 decibels. And as a dungeon master, I put it at negative 90. And that's it. So now everyone can hear each other, and if you want to do theater of the mind, then you're good to go. But let's take it a step farther. Let's get that video involved so we can all see each other. And again, this isn't mandatory, but it really does add to the experience. And now everything else we need will be taken care of in Roll20. I'm gonna show the whole process here, starting with how the DM needs to set up the server, then I'm gonna do a section just for the players of all the settings you need to have for everyone, and then I'm gonna finish up with all the stuff the DM needs to know to run the game behind the scenes. So if you wanna make it way easier on your players, then send them this video to help them get set up. Do a simple search for Roll20. First thing you're gonna see is create a free account. Name's gonna be Dungeon Coach. Type in that email and password, create the account. Welcome to the dungeon. Get started, English. Dungeon Coach, start playing. Create a game, join a game. We need to create a game. So now we need to name our game. I've already named it Dungeon Land before, so we're gonna go Dungeonia. Scroll down, don't create the game yet. You are gonna do the optional rule of adding in a D&D 5e by roll 20. And now create your game. None of the rest of these things are necessary except for this button to invite other players. Go to settings right here, game settings. All of this stuff is that paid membership again that I'm doing in the giveaway, but you keep scrolling down. Allow players to import their own characters. Yes, access compendium in game. You wanna put that to that D&D 5th edition thing we talked about earlier. 
Share compendium with my players? Yes. This character sheet's awesome, but we're gonna make a few changes to it to make it even better. Is role queries, you're going to select toggle advantage. Scroll down a little further, and if you go to don't auto roll damage, I would recommend to auto roll damage. There's a ton of other options here, but you don't need them. Go all the way down to save changes. Now, this is important to be able to find your game once you've created it. Go up to games, and then you should have it right here. If you have a picture of it, the picture will show up right here, but you can click Dungeonia. Now, launch your game. And now you're in. So here's the section I'm talking about for players with a quick tour. Up here in the top left corner is how you select things. This is a brush that lets you uh, freehand draw stuff. Uh, you can just control Z to erase it. Further down here, we have the D20 dice right there. If you click on that, it pops up a menu. You can roll a D4, you can roll a D6, and everything comes down in the chat box right here. Also, this is important. Anything, any of these menus that you move around can double tap and it makes it smaller. You can bring it in and out at any time. But this is the roller. You can roll 2d4s, 3d4s, 4d4s, uh, oops, d20s, d100s. All this stuff lets you be able to roll whatever you want really easily. That's all you need from the top left over here. So let's go over to the top right. This is your chat box that you can see all the rolls and people talking in. You won't have this option. You will have a journal. And this is where your character is going to be once your DM puts it there. But don't worry, he hasn't figured out how to do that yet. The little I is the information of that compendium that we opened up about anything from D&D 5th edition. And now go to that far settings wheel, click on that. You can change your display name here to be whatever you want. I tell my players to change it to their character name once we get started. Scroll down a little bit farther and here's the only options you need to mess with. Enable 3D dice is huge and super cool. As soon as you enable 3D dice, you can go over here now and when you roll that D20 like I said, you can click and drag like this right here, uh, roll the dice a certain direction, and it rolls it out for you with the literal dice out there. I like this a lot better, you can see the number, uh, but it also does pop it up in the chat, but I don't like the color of this dice, so I'm gonna change it. Down here next to where your face would be is click this little color box, and you can change, I'm gonna go Dungeon Coach Purple, and now whenever I roll that D20, there's your purple D20. Also, whenever you roll, if you don't like the fact that, like, I don't like having to drag in all that, I'm gonna click Disable on that, and now it just automatically rolls. And we scroll down a little farther, actually all the way farther, down to the very bottom, and these are the last two options you need to know. I want to broadcast to others, I want to receive from others. Change both of this to video only. Right now, it's Discord and Roll20 will be blasting out audio. Switch it to video only and then press reconnect. Another thing with these boxes, if you hover over it and you look at the bottom left corner, you can grab these three bars and move people's faces around and position them wherever you want. Bonus settings tip here is if you're not using a mouse and you're using the actual scroll wheel, you can change this to use scroll, switch it to pan, and when you swipe around, you can move now instead of it zooming in and out. And that's really all you need to be a player. And now with those players out of the way, for the Dungeon Master, here's the run down on your tools, how to make maps and minis, or in this case, tokens. First thing here you got is your selector tool. This just lets you click on all the different stuff. Next you have your layer tool. There's a map layer, a token layer, and a GM layer. And whatever layer you're on and you put stuff onto is where you'll put it. So if you wanna make a map, make sure you're on the map layer before you drag a map into it. But if you're bringing in monsters or characters, make sure you put them on the object and tokens layer. And if you want something that nobody can see, put it on the GM layer. The brush tool is nice to be able to draw stuff. You can draw squares. You can do by freehand, whatever. But if you do control Z, it undoes it, but it only undoes one thing. So I'd have to go back to the selector tool, select it, and then press delete. Those are the most important things here. The only thing else is this GM dice. You can turn on GM mode to where now everything I roll, if you see over here, Everything I roll is gonna be secret. And you can see right here it says GM, which means only I see it. So if you wanna turn that secret mode on or off, it's right here. Finishing up the tour now, you have your chat room, obviously. This is only for you. You have some free assets here you can click on. You can drag any of these things and put them on here, move them around. Uh, you see all these other things I'll talk about here in a second. Because me personally, I'm not the biggest fan of these. I don't like the top-down perspective. I like to get a good look. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make tokens here in a second. Here's the character journal thing, which was how you're gonna make those characters. We already talked about this. This is a jukebox you can add music to. There's a whole library inside here that you can add music, so whenever you're on a certain page, you can play music. 
collections is some advanced stuff, and then you have your settings wheel. And the last thing here that you might not have noticed is this small little blue page. Click on it, and it opens up each of your different pages. Imagine having battle maps. These are each of your different maps that you can have your players see or not. So this is where we're at right now, and you can see this banner called players, because that's what the players see. But let's create something they can't see. Click on create new page, and it's gonna create this new page right here. It looks the exact same, but now I'm gonna show you how to add a map. I'm gonna go to Google and search for a map. I'm gonna search for roll 20 desert, desert, battle map images, and we'll snag one right here. I'm going to save the image as. I made a folder just for this and put it right there. Now I'm gonna go back to roll 20. There's my map. I'm gonna open up my files, go to the documents that I just created for this roll 20, and there's my desert map, drag it over. Loading. Okay, when it loads in, I'm gonna zoom back here a little bit, and I'm gonna try and, you can move this around wherever you want. I like to put it in that top left corner, get it matched up there, okay? And then if you notice, it has grid lines and the actual uh, Roll20 server has grid lines. These do not match up. So if I go over here and grab that little knight again, I put them down. Uh, this is, oh, I just realized something. We are still on, if you remember from earlier, we are on the objects and token layer right now. I'm gonna take my own advice and I'm gonna take this map, this is a great example, I'm gonna right click this and go to layer and I'm gonna move the map to the map layer. Now it's on the map layer and you can now see that it's overlapped by the grid lines which is why that's so important. And they just don't match up at all and it looks awful and it makes me feel bad. This figure is only gonna match and snap down to the actual square of roll 20, not this map. So you need to sync them up together. Here's how you do it, this blew my mind. We're gonna now go to the map layer to make sure we're, we're able to manipulate the map. I'm gonna scroll out here. I'm gonna drag this out to get it a little bigger. And now what's gonna happen, I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna right click on the map and I'm gonna do advanced align to grid is what you click. Click align to grid. It's gonna ask you for a three by three grid to be able to sync it up to. So I'm looking at the map, not the roll 20 grid. I'm looking at my actual map. I'm looking at it. I'm looking for good grid lines here. I'm gonna put that plus right on that intersection. And I'm going to grab one square, a two by two, and a three by three. Grab that all out there, nice and good. Release. It says whatever it's calculated it to be, align to grid, and then it snaps it right to the grid. So now, you can see this right here, this little guy. He's all faded. Why is he faded? Because we're on the map layer. I'm gonna go to the now object layer and now you can see him and now I can grab him and move him around on the grid and it snaps to this map's grid because they're synced up now. So cool we have our map and now we got to get our player tokens because again I don't like these little tokens no offense I'm sorry I want to have my own players be able to make theirs from scratch. So I tell my players to go online and find your character what they look like and if they ever want to update or change it they can send it to me and I'll make a token for them and if I want monsters I can pick any monster I can find a picture of. To make a token is the exact same way. I'm going to go back to Google. I'm going to search for, we're going to search D&D &D Purple Dragonborn. Looking for a cool picture. We'll go with this one right here. Right click, same thing, save image as, uh, purple dragonborn, save it. It's in my folder. Now I'm gonna go to this website. There's a link down in the description to this. It's amazing. It is a custom token creator, and all you gotta do is the same thing as before. Open up your files, drag the picture in, and it will cut a circle with a transparent image around it. And now I'm gonna kinda size it to fit it, open it up, what I wanna see, I wanna see this. Boom. Done, and then uh, that's the preview of what it's gonna show. It's gonna be transparent around this circle. I scroll down to download, and I can download my token. Save the token, dragon born token. Save it and go back to roll 20, and now I open up that same file. This is how the whole system works. Everything is just a drag and drop. Loading, and now let's zoom in here, and there he is. He's pretty massive right now on this battlefield, so I'm gonna slope them down to the size of a grid and now I have a token on the field. But the problem is this is just a random token with no stats and it's not a player character yet. So let's make it a player character. So now we're gonna go up to this journal feature and this is super important and this is where you can add all characters or NPCs or anything you want. Click the add button 
You can add folders to stay organized, handouts if you want paper handouts of notes or other documents, but you click character. It's gonna give you some randomly generated name. I'm gonna name him Alcander. This page is also important because if you look here, you can change the character's name and you can put it in different players' journals. Since I'm doing this, it only has all players and me, but this will also have all of the rest of your players and you can assign it to a specific player. For now, I'm gonna choose myself here and I'm gonna choose myself here as well. But I usually choose myself and the other player once you actually have players in here. And I'm gonna click you selected token because if you see over here, I have that token selected currently and now it assigns that character to that token. You can also upload other art for this character up here, but I'm gonna go ahead and click save. This part is huge for the DM. If you have made a character for your DM, this is where you stop. As the DM, you have their token, you have their character, you've created their character sheet, you stop here. You do not click this character sheet thing. If you do, then that's gonna prompt an action that your player needs to take to be able to make their sheet. So you leave it here, I would exit out, and I'd leave it alone, I'd let my player come in. Now when they go to their journal, they will see any character that's assigned to them. You as the DM can see everything, so let's act like now we're the player, and this is also important for players now too. They can click on this, it pops this up, and they can click character sheet. Three options pop up here. If you have experienced players, they can edit the sheet directly, click that, it drops off, and you have a blank character sheet that you can type everything into. You can also create an NPC here if you want, but this really cool feature, especially for beginner players, is use the character mancer. So for right now, I'm gonna click on that. It goes race. You can pick between any of the races here that you want. We're gonna pick Dragonborn. You can choose an alignment, but I'm not gonna choose an alignment. Uh, Dragonborn Ancestry, there's not purple, which upsets me, but we're gonna go uh, red. Red and blue make purple, you know what I'm saying? And then we're gonna go down here, click next. Class, what class are you gonna be? I'm going to be a barbarian, got it. Weapon proficiencies, you can choose your skill proficiencies and everything here. Myself, personally, I do a lot of homebrew stuff with character creation, and this system still is open to be able to do that. I don't limit my players the certain skill proficiency options, I let them choose between what makes sense for their character. Link right here to that video. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here and just click next. For your abilities, you can choose a custom ability score and you can fill in your stats. I'm just gonna put in the standard array for the video. And next. For the background, I always just click custom. We're gonna be a nomad. And again, I leave these proficiencies. You can choose to add them in yourself. The equipment feature also here is pretty nice because you can choose class equipment and it gives you some drop down menus of what you want. I'm gonna choose a great sword, of course, and Next. I'm a barbarian, so I don't have any spells, but if you choose a spellcaster class, it actually has drop down menus for you to pick your spells as well, making it super efficient. Feats, we're level one, we don't have any feats, and you can enter in all your biography stuff here as well. Next, it gives you the rundown of everything. I, of course, have a bunch of blanks in here, but I will fill in that manually myself. Apply changes, and there's the character sheet in all its glory. You can, it adds your modifiers in for you, and you can type in this character sheet. You can select your proficiencies here of whatever you wanna be proficient in. You can highlight and change anything you want. I have 30 health now. And there's a fully functioning character sheet. And another thing you can do here is if you exit out of this thing and open it back up, it has a magnifying glass right here that you can also edit, or you can zoom out to kind of fit it to the screen the best way you want. Here, and once it's in a good spot you like, you can again, double tap that right there, and it goes smaller to where if you're a player or if you're even a dungeon master and you wanna access something, you can see everything, you need to make a roll, double tap this right here, and you can make a roll. The other great thing about this character sheet is you can actually click the actual ability. I'm gonna make an acrobatics check, literally click acrobatics, and it makes a roll for it over in the chat. You click performance, and it rolls a performance check. There's that dice. Back to the character sheet, you can also make saving throws, and if you wanna make a strength check, you can just click literal strength, and it rolls that too. You wanna to make attack roll, click on your greatsword, it makes an attack roll, and rolls the damage for it because we chose that option earlier. The last thing here is to get this character good to go. I'm gonna click the settings wheel right here. You can name this character, I'll name it Alcander. I'm gonna show the nameplate so you actually can see it. It's controlled by, you need to select who it's controlled by or this character sheet and the token won't be fully connected and your character, sorry, your player won't be able to move it. The only thing you need from advanced is to be able to see the name, I just click that and that's it. Go ahead and save. Now you can see the character is named, I can move it, the player can move it, and the last thing that I do is I type in the health up here. In these little boxes, you can type in the health. I have 30 health that I gave myself. My armor class, let me check, is 13. How handy was that? I type in 13, enter, and the coolest part is all of these you can change with plus or minus commands. So 30, I get hit for five health, minus five, enter, and it changes it automatically for you. But now they need something to fight, let's give them a monster. Y'all already know how to do this. I'm going to Google 
And I'm gonna search in Onkeg. That's a great picture right there. Grab the picture, Onkeg. Go to my token creator, delete that picture, drag in the Onkeg, resize it around, make sure it looks nice and scary. Boom, download it, save that token, Onkeg token. Go back to roll 20, open up that file, drag in your token, drag in, drag in your token. And there he is, he's huge. I'm gonna make it a massive Onkeg that takes up two squares, two by two, whoa. And now there you go. The last super important thing here is as the Dungeon Master, you control what screen your players see. If you click this little blue page right here, this shows you every page possible that you've created as the DM, but your players only see the screen that this banner is on. This is that page we started off at, and you can put whatever pictures you want here, but this is what your players see. And when that battle breaks out, click the little blue page, drag that player's banner over here, and now, now this is what they see, ready for battle. And now as the sneaky dungeon master, you can go here and maybe have a page right here. <gasps> Where'd this come from? Okay, so I'm gonna surprise you guys with a secret page right here. I'm gonna click here to this new secret page. I'm gonna put stuff here that I can grab from as the DM. I'm gonna just drag them all over, five images all at once over here. You can have this be your monsters, you can have this be anything you want, and it populates them all right here. And I can have them here, I can put them in different sizes, pull them all out here and be ready to throw at my players. What's really nice is the players don't even know this is here. So if I want, I can highlight all the things here, copy them, control C, go to the battle map, and out of nowhere, boom, throw them all in. And now they're all in here out of nowhere, ready to go. But we're gonna delete this for now so they don't see it coming. So now you're ready. You know how to move stuff around up here. You have the video options right there. You have chat, character pages, and settings. You know how to move and drag and drop maps, monsters, and characters into your game. You know how to move the pages around, create new ones, and move your players around to see what they see. And you got everybody in Discord ready to play. I hope this made playing online less intimidating and more exciting. So if this video helped you out, then please share it with your friends. And if you have any questions or need some troubleshooting, comment down below and we can all help each other out. With all this COVID-19 social distancing stuff, I really hope this helps people connect together and play with their friends online. I have never done D&D online before, so this video showcases what I was able to learn for you guys to help give you beginner tips on how to figure it out. In fact, I just started my own group with everything I've learned from this. It's gonna be a homebrewed two-shot, and I'm gonna do some live streams where I go behind the scenes and show you how I make it. And until next time, stay creative and think outside that box. Peace.